whether it's something we see or hear, maybe read or even experience. At some point in our lives, we all feel that deep desire to be closely connected to God. That is God calling you. Join us as we listen to the inspiring stories of persons just like us who answered yes to God's call. We'll explore how God took them from where they were through their troubles, their trials, their temptations, their tribulations, and brought them to where they are today. This is why we believe. Hi, beautiful people, and welcome to Why We Believe. The Word of God says in Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies. And they love not their lives mm -hmm. unto death. I'm Shoei. And I'm Rhonda. And today we have a very special guest. One is no stranger to the set. Two. 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 <laughs> okay, we have two special guests. Mm -hmm. One is no stranger <laughs> to the set. But before we introduce them, let's just open with a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, we want to give you thanks and praise for life, health, and strength. Our Father, today we need you more than ever. We ask, Lord, that you take charge. Yeah. We ask that you lead, guide, and direct uh, this testimony, Lord. We even pray that your Holy Spirit truly cover each one of us here today. Yeah. Cover us with your blood and plant your hedge of protection around us. We ask mm. that you dispatch your angels, those that excel in strength, that surround this house, Lord Father, and protect it from any dangers seen and unseen. Mm. Cover us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, <laughs> today... <laughs> We have Sister Nicole Shallow, mm -hmm. who is no stranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have her beautiful daughter, Sister Nicolette <laughs> Shallow. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And today, today, hmm, we know it's Nicole here. It's always a powerful testimony, right? I hope. <laughs> yes. well, let me yes. say this. Let me say this. And Linda, I'm calling your name because you left it bold on the chat. Yes. Linda said that Nicole has more to add to her testimony. <laughs> we don't know what it is, is as yet, but we'll give Nicole the opportunity to say so. Amen, amen. So, we want to start. What a, who you want us to start with was you, Nicole, <laughs> Nicolette? Yeah, let, let's hear who, who Nicolette is. All right, Nicolette. Mm -hmm. Yes, tell us who is Nicolette Shallow, apart from the singer and all those things. <laughs> Well, I'm Nicolette Shallow. I'm Auntie Nicole's daughter. Um, I'm 19 years old, and I was premature when I was born. My mom said, "We make sure you start from the beginning." So I was, right. I was premature when I was born. How many months? She was seven months, mm -hmm. and I I went to work, and they were actually. Going, one of my colleagues kept telling me, she said, Nicole, that child in your belly is special. Mm. Oh, she also used to tell me that. I said, all my children are special. And I had Gideon Jr. Yeah. And um, at that day, they were having a shower for me. And I organized, I was up in the Ministry of Energy and leaving to go down to the constituency office. And when I went to the bathroom, there was just a little more water than normal. <laughs> and... After that, and just kept running, and I was like, "No, this is not no. normal." Mm -hmm. And uh, she's just she seven months. She was actually supposed to be born in June, but she was born in the month of March, mm -hmm. um, somewhere between May and June. So I just had to um, go to the hospital mm -hmm. and not go to the shower, <laughs> <laughs> which was a surprise. Sure, she was she was anxious oh, for the okay. shower. <laughs> I was going to. They, they, it was supposed to be a special meeting. They told me I was coming to, so it was really a surprise Prize. baby shower. Wow, okay. they were surprised instead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm premature. I have an older brother, Gideon Jr., and well, he's named after my dad. And I 
went to Gloucester Ledge Moravian School, my primary school. Gloucester Ledge Moravian. Yes. It nobody knows where it is, so don't stress. I That's know fine. where it is. <laughs> you do? Yes. Actually? You actually know where it is? Yes. Whoa. I was a Moravian. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. my sister taught at that school. Yeah. Oh I didn't know. Yeah. That. Uh, <laughs> I guess trying to calculate the years. No, Mr. Would have left yes, already. Would have yeah. left already. That's the first time that's ever happened. Most people are just like, oh, you don't know where that is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Before, yeah, before, yeah. Yeah. before yeah. I went to Gloucester, I went to Norvis Kindergarten. And every school I went to, my brother went there first. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. <laughs> so, so he went to Norvis. I went to, yeah, mm -hmm. and he went to Gloucester. Well, you probably Gloucester. know what's the snow. Yeah, all right, go ahead. <laughs> so I went to Gloucester Village Moravian School. Um, it was, it was a fun experience, an interesting experience, because growing up in church and our entire lives being surrounded or inundated with church work mm. because of who our parents are. Yeah. <laughs> um, going into a different environment where your friends or the people around you are not necessarily advantaged was quite interesting. Mm. And um, I remember I went to the school when I first got into Gloucester Lodge. Um, my cousin was with me and then I went to second year and I was the only girl in the classroom. So it was just myself as the female and surrounded by boys, boys. which mm. had its means for not fun experiences. <laughs> and then um, one of my teachers, she calls herself my adopted mother. Um, she took me into her class where there were more girls and that's kind of where the socialization and interacting with people who are not necessarily Adventist mm -hmm. began. Yeah. And um, that opened up its doors for some not fun experiences as well. I was, and I tend to be a little timid. So my allowance in primary school in second year was $3 a day. <laughs> I got $3 to spend in the cafeteria. And <laughs> apparently because the other children didn't get three dollars so i didn't see it as very much but apparently it was quite a bit of money and i remember i never got to spend it on myself because of the people that were around me my parents always liked to make sure we got um full lunches mm -hmm. so we yeah. never had to buy anything yeah. so i didn't have to use the three dollars so yeah. we got two boxes of juice snacks and everything and some of the other children didn't get that and so they decided to take from me from, from time to time but <laughs> not without not with my permission so, it was so i wouldn't i mean i wouldn't say they had malintent i would yeah, say right. sometimes children are just being children and they don't realize that they yeah. can be me you're so sweet <laughs> 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 I don't want to call them bullies. <laughs> so that kind of happened. I remember they used to, I mean, when you go to school in an environment like Gonzales, um, where education and academia is not necessarily at the forefront of everybody's mm. mind, mm -hmm. for my brother and I, and of course for other children there it was, but for a lot of the children in my class, maybe it wasn't the forefront, and if it was, they weren't as academically inclined. They're all amazing, smart people given what they're doing now mm -hmm. but um it so i remember i used to get a's all the time thank god and <laughs> when they didn't get an a they used to make me feel bad <laughs> that i was the only one that got one until i reached in like standard two standard three and that's when i learned to start um standing up for myself a little bit more mm -hmm. and then after primary school we did sca which at the time for me I guess everybody kind of goes through the experience of thinking that every major life event is the end of the world if it doesn't go well. Yeah. So for me, it was SEA. And I have to credit my family, of course, for the help that they put through, but also yeah. my teachers, they worked very hard with us. And um, we had mock exams before the SEA exam. And I would say that was the first time that my Adventist faith started to collide with my academic life because mm -hmm. the mock exam was on a Saturday and I remember in my head it was not an option I couldn't go and I remember we had a family group chat because for some reason you allowed me to have a phone at 11 years old <laughs> and I messaged them just like I know I can't go to the exam but I'm not sure if I don't want to go meaning right. I knew going was not an option mm -hmm. but I was like 
but I, maybe I do want to go. And I was like, I shouldn't want to go because Jesus does not want me to go. Like, mm-hmm. He wants me to keep the Sabbath. But I ended up getting to do it on the Monday. And then during the SEA exam, our teachers prayed with us and everything. And we did it. And my first choice, I passed for it. Um, my choices were St. Joseph's Convent, mm-hmm. Holy Name Convent, St. Francois Girls College, and St. James Sac. Mom said she didn't want to put all first choice schools, <laughs> and <laughs> my cousin went to St. James Sac. But we were traveling at the time, so every day when I would, when my father was taking me to our different extracurricular activities, which we had like one extracurricular activity every day, hmm. I, there were a lot it? of. Yeah. Right. <laughs> After, if it wasn't extracurricular, it was church work, and if it wasn't church work, it was homework. So, (laughs) I think so. That's out of trouble. So, yeah, I remember having to travel, and then every time we were going home, there would be a lot of St. James Sex students walking home. And I used to get scared because I thought it was a sign from God that I wasn't going to go to my my first choice. But I did pass for St. Joseph's Convent, and I think that was definitely God's plan because from there I got to do many, many things, meet many more amazing people, and it kind of helped open my eyes up to pursue bigger things as well. Amen. So that's like a brief. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Here we go. So during that, that period, Which during that, that when when you went when you began college now. Convent. Right? convent yeah. Sorry. It's okay. When you began convent, mm-hmm. I mean it said that you, you met some other Adventists. I, there was one other event. One. She actually goes to your church, Seychelles. Yeah, okay. oh, Seychelles. Yeah. Yes. You met some people. Yeah. 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 I actually met her before in extracurriculars, again, music school. Right. So I yeah. met her there, and then at convent, she was there. I can't say that I interacted with her as much, mm-hmm. but, you know, knowing that there was another Somebody. Adventist at school yeah. kind of, you know, helped me, like, okay, it's going to be fine. It was also the first time. Well, I wouldn't say it was the first, because I never went to an Adventist educational institution. But um, (laughs) it was the first time going into a Catholic school and I didn't know what to expect. And I would say in the Adventist church, there are a lot of exaggerations because everybody always tries to make you feel that if you go into a non-Adventist environment, they're gonna try to convert you Mm -hmm. and they're gonna be mean to you. It's gonna be a terrible experience and you have to convert everybody that you meet. You should try to convert everybody that you meet. Um, And (laughs) I went to convent and I remember being scared because I was just like, oh no, everything's gonna be on a Sunday and they're gonna hate me because I'm an Adventist. And it ended up not being like that at all. Mm -hmm. Um, Catholic meeting, Meeting with Catholic persons, going to school with them kind of taught me to value my faith more. Because when you see the devotion of persons who may not have the full light, (laughs) it's very, it's very inspiring to me. (laughs) Yes, the convent was great. I'm sorry, I don't think I answered your question. (laughs) No, yes, you you did. You did. You did, right? Because really, actually, I was going to find out if, if, um, how it actually matched now, how many people were Adventists, but the experience was just just one. one. Yeah. yeah, and then and then yes, the same thought actually going to a lot of people might that you know they tend to try to want to convert us, you know, yeah. as the case may be. But I just say, uh, the light that you have, the foundation that you had, yes, truly kept you firm mm-hmm. through all that. So, in school, <laughs> right? And how how did how did let me just kind of I don't want to say speech, but I want to I want to know how that that um those. How many? Five years? Six years? Seven. Seven, seven years. Yeah, seven yeah. years of convent. Yeah. Yeah, how, how that, yeah what, what sort of challenges you have? Mm-hmm. I mean, that um, being in not so, well, there's only one Adventist. I don't know if any, many more are joined after, I'd come to school after. But mm-hmm. during that period, how did, um, how did your friends react? You know, did to you have any, Adventism? yeah, did you have any peer pressure, anything like that? wouldn't say so everybody's pretty welcoming and understanding of other people's situations because we're all pretty yeah. different mm-hmm. in some way be it in a religious sense or in a psychological sense everybody's different and i would say that m- the persons in my class and in just the common community are always quite welcoming mm-hmm. um i guess peer pressure in the sense of when things happen on a saturday and i yeah. can't participate so mm-hmm. convent has this huge fundraiser called parang in a pot yeah yes it happens in the night though but 
depending on when sun sets. So yeah. I remember I was in the Pan Ensemble and we had to play at the beginning of the event, event mm -hmm. but when the event started, sun didn't set. Yes. <laughs> so I had to wait and I remember I had to play. I wasn't playing a Pan the first time I participated in a, with the Pan Ensemble at Parang in a Pot. I was playing the congas, mm. conga drums. <laughs> And um, I remember feeling so sad because, you know, everyone's there. Of course, there's somebody who would have been able to do it had I not been there. But I remember feeling bad because we practiced so much. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. it's the day, it's time to reform, and I couldn't go. And it was, that was kind of sad. Sometimes, um, I would say that would be the biggest detractor in things. Something else that was a little different was, I don't think everybody exactly knew what a Seventh Day Adventist was. Mm -hmm. So maybe I might have been their first interaction with mm -hmm. one. So um, saying, oh, well, I can't do this on a Saturday, they're just like, What's why? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but they were, again, very understanding people. And they're like, oh, okay, well, that's your life. That's fine. Good for you. And in small ways, I got to be a witness. When I first went into the school, that's something that is always in your brain as a Christian. Like, wherever you go, you have to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Mm. And I was learning how to do that without being an overbearing Christian. Mm. So I remember <laughs> I got too excited the first time somebody asked me about the Bible and Jesus. Yeah. Okay, so Catholics go through something called confirmation. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where they learn more about their doctrine in the Bible or whatnot. For myself as an Adventist person, or an Adventist child, you learn about the Bible your whole life because of your core to lead. Yeah. When we were children, our parents, well, I'm still a child, when we were younger, our yeah. parents would read, <laughs> <laughs> they would read the core to lead to us and you learn about Moses and Daniel and everything like that. And when they had religion classes in convent, because yeah. it is a denominational school, and they're talking about things, and I know these stories like the back of my hand mm -hmm. because I've been Bro, reading them mm -hmm. and yeah. hearing them since I was the, since I can comprehend, in the womb. yes, in the womb. <laughs> <laughs> I've been reading since in the womb. So I remember talking about stories, and they're just like, "You know your Bible so well," they and didn't I was just like, class, "No," oh, because okay. it was. Yeah. I would say interacting with another religion as Adventists, they're always they were very understanding. It wasn't like you're not allowed to say anything, yeah. and it was like basic. I learned things that were different. When we first started, we were looking at the books of the Bible and I was so excited because Pathfinder and you know, you know draw Ooh, stories and I was yeah. ready. And then they're like, so we're gonna talk about the book of Maccabees. And I was just like, I'm sorry? There's <laughs> 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 Maccabees. <laughs> it was, it was, I didn't know there was a Mac, in their Bible, they have some extra books. Yeah. Mm. They didn't know they existed. So there was Maccabees and all of the other Mm -hmm. books that I, I don't remember the names of but it religion classes were interesting so during religion classes when they spoke about bible stories it was just like oh i know this and i would say oh well this happened and this has happened and they would look at me like i knew my bible so well and to me i was like i don't know my bible mm -hmm. as well as i should i'm just yeah. telling you the story i can't tell you where it's taken <laughs> from so i feel like i got away with um thinking sometimes because they'd be like like, like, you're so holy, you should be a nun. Like, that's what they would say. And I'd be like, in no way <laughs> would I think of myself that way because, you know, all our righteousness is just filthy rags. But also, it's not, no. So <laughs> it was it was very interesting being applauded for things that mm -hmm. to us are just, you know, basic. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happened when she was at Convent um, in Form 1, mm -hmm. they would do a drill. Um, uh, uh, for intruder, oh, there was intruder fire. come up. Fire drill, intruder drill. Sorry. And they, um, so, and so they um, so I said, I saw the alarm, and they had to lock the doors and do whatever they. No, that's them kind do. of counterproductive because the school is. I shouldn't say this online. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so they saw the alarm. It was they didn't tell them, mm -hmm. yeah. and she was in the class, her class. And everything started, and all the girls in the class were just going crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's really an intruder. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so she had to take control. And so they didn't know that she could have actually raised her voice. Yeah. Yeah. And she took control and started to give instructions and stuff like that. And then yeah. 
When I went the afternoon, the teacher called me and she said, your daughter is a natural leader. Mm. She said we had this drill and all the other girls are like headless chickens and she getting all panicked. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's me. And <laughs> she, she said, but um, they were able, she helped to pull them she back. Order. Mm -hmm. And when the order came, then they started to think together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it ended up really, really being a good team drill after. Yeah. Yeah. But it, from the initial happening, yeah. they didn't think on their feet yeah because it's four months it's four yeah. months they're yeah. young so you can't blame them you know and they say you intruder drill and remember a certain level of um classifications in our know, social yeah. is there so it's yeah. like i'm gonna die because i'm a, <laughs> I'm a I'm die. you know but mm -hmm. the, and that's when um she didn't know but they started to take notice of her from them I love the fact that they saw that leadership qualities in Nicolette. But Nicolette, did you see that leadership quality in yourself? I would say that leadership qualities and forefront activities are never at the front of my mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say I never thought about it. But since my brother and myself growing up, our parents were always, there are certain mantras that exist <laughs> that they would say so that's how you know like certain scriptures or whatnot but they always say be the head and not the tail yeah, yeah. so i guess maybe subconsciously but it was never like at the forefront mm -hmm. i'm like okay i know i'm a leader i can be a leader it never really crossed right, my mind. Yeah. right 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 mm -hmm. so I, I like that. that i like that <laughs> so, you know all right so they are leader they're <laughs> gonna do all of that for all the three years and then it, it came, you know, it, it's so, it, you, you know what I love about... You love you know, things too? Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what I love mostly about this um, mother-daughter relationship, and I never, I never mentioned it to Nicole, though, but the time when we, we when it came with, you came and moved on, you know, yeah, that truly hit me. The relationship, nah, the mm -hmm. communication, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I love about it. You know, so um, all three years within that school, and then you reach, yeah, and then you <laughs> reach the, the 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 year for um, CFC. CFC, and yeah, <laughs> God has truly been with you all Miracles. through the years. Yes, yes sir. he has been with you all through those years, and now there's the, the time in most students' life that they, I I I don't know if fear is a word. 100%. But yeah, so you know they always <laughs> want to do. Very well. So tell us how mm -hmm. how with all this this build up. I mean, from form one to mm -hmm. five. Yeah. How yeah. How was it? Yeah. How was it? How all the preparation. Um, convent is a very great school. We have very amazing teachers. Mm -hmm. If you want to know a school to send your child, convent's a good school. Um, <laughs> convent's great. And our teachers worked very hard with us, but I would say something that really kind of shifted us a bit off of our axis was when we were in Form 4, I think the second term of Form 4, COVID happened. Uh, yeah. So we went from physical in-person education to virtual methods. Yeah. And that took a, it was a big hit for all of us because you have to adjust your learning. You have to make sure your internet is um, set up. Mm -hmm. yeah. You also have a larger amount of your education in your hands. So I would say being in the school environment is a very good um, contributor to your productivity, yeah. especially since you have that separation of, you know, you go to school, that's school time, you come home, that's homework time or relax time. Yeah. But during COVID, it kind of meshed into mm -hmm. one. So it led to all of us were very, very much burnt out especially since like our school tried their best i would say and you would have like we still had like recess we yeah. don't say recess break time mm -hmm. and lunch time and I, it felt like and we would have like 10 minutes or five minutes in between virtual classes to give your eyes a break but it really hit you during the time how fast that time goes mm -hmm. so it was a pretty tough time especially again with the majority of your educational experience well it wasn't the majority but a lot of your educational experience mm -hmm. being in your hands because yeah. if you wake up late or you just decide not to log into class or if you do log into class and you mute your laptop or if you're just there and you're not paying attention and it's very important things so it kind of made cxc harder and then 
the CXC body. I reserve my comments on the CXC body. <laughs> the CXC body <laughs> went through their turmoil as well. So we had to, when exam season struck, it was kind of navigating a whole different environment as opposed to what persons had experienced before. So you come to school, you have to socially distance, you have to wear your masks and you're going into the exam room. And it was just a very tough time. Mm -hmm. I remember I did nine subjects mm. because I can, I guess. <laughs> and we in convent, you have to do English A and English B. So that's normal English and literature. Yeah. Um, and well, of course, math. I decided to do add math, all three sciences. So bio, chemistry, and physics. Math, add math, three <laughs> sciences. I did two languages, Spanish and French, English and yeah. English and English. Thank you very much. So that's nine. And I had to do Spanish. I'll reserve my comments on that as well. I had to do Spanish <laughs> outside and there was a hullabaloo, but God fixed it and it mm -hmm. ended up going great. And so I had to do nine subjects and that was a very tough time. And so I was doing biology and biology is very topic heavy, very theory dense. Yeah. So you have to know the information. It's not like math where you know a formula and you can do like 10 questions. You actually have to know what you're doing in biology. That's CXC biology. I did not do Cape biology, so I can't really comment on how it yeah. was. And I remember I asked my parents, one thing about education is that when you have supportive parents and yeah. family yes. who are willing to yeah, do make things out of no way, like in no way, I, I often say that I acknowledge my privilege in life, but I, I, it's not to say that my family is rich or my parents are rich. Mm. I have parents who, when they say our children need something, they're gonna, with God's help, move heaven and earth yeah. to make sure it happens right. <laughs> and so for biology i was like i know myself i know i need to study biology a lot but i can foresee myself leaving it on the side and prioritizing everything else and then when the exam comes i don't know what i'm doing and so i asked my mom to allow me to do biology lessons not for lack of knowledge of biology mm -hmm. or lack of understanding because we had great teachers yeah. but so that i can force study biology and they did that. I don't want to ask how much it cost, but they did do that. <laughs> and CXC was great, and I ended up getting all my subjects. All the subjects. All yes. ones. All ones. She was insane. But, but Nicolette, what, what kept you so focused? <laughs> On school? On school. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because you had a busy, quite frankly, I see watching you, you know, you had a busy life, so. It was quite busy. Yeah, but so. during COVID, the extracurriculars kind of died down. I used to have an extracurricular activity every single day of the week. So after school, we'd go straight to extracurriculars. And then if we had church, we'd go to church. And then, I mean, even if you come to church at nine o'clock, you need to finish your homework. So I'd finish my homework. So for me, I would say I like school. I love mm. school and I know the benefits of an education in academia. Yeah. So I did everything that I could to make sure that we worked hard at school and our 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 meaning my brother and myself, our parents, um, they always emphasize that well, education is very important. Even in primary school, our teachers would say, reading is the key to success and your education is important and it opens mm -hmm. doors for you. So I really liked school and I understood and understand the importance of school and we never our parents would never let us halfway do anything right. yeah. so if you're doing anything you have to, to put your best, best foot forward and so what i have find it to do do it with my mind mm -hmm. yeah. see the mantras yeah. and so uh, <laughs> we had to i that's kind of why i like school i want to do very well at it and had to do my best always so that's why I'm one of the things that both of them, both our children, as they were growing up, we gave them the steps um, for them to follow yeah. in their lives. So we tell them, stick with God, but we tell them your only employment, because school is employment. Mm. So your only job is your education. Yeah. One. So like things like washing ways and stuff like that, the only time you'll do that is when school is closed. Mm. When school is open, your job is your books and your responsibilities to pass. Also, we always tell them always and had them repeated for us that you get your, you go through SCA, you go to CXC, you will do your A-levels, then you will go to university. 
at no time during that process you are to tell us about a relationship <laughs> right because if you have a relationship you must be able to carry that relationship mm -hmm. financially mm -hmm. and if you can't then you can't have it so while you're in university you may meet the one but take that time to court but you need to get your mm -hmm. degree you need to get your master's when you reach there then you can tell us about marriage you can go to your phd then right and then you get married as a woman you still have to make sure you have your own house so while you're married to your husband you'll have your house renting out so you'll have an extra income coming in and you get married you make sure you have your car you get your car but make sure you follow these guidelines mm -hmm. so that life will be happy and don't forget jesus in all of it you cannot bring somebody who does not know jesus you cannot bring somebody and be unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. Your mother will pray them away. So don't even bring them because God has a plan. And so we will tell them that all the time. My husband will think I'm extreme all the time. I said, children learn not they live. You tell them, they will think it. So when they try to think about it, the Holy Spirit will tell them, mm -hmm. um, mommy, you know, and as they will tell you, as my son will tell people, mommy does chip, not trip. Because mm -hmm. when somebody tried to correct me and said, um, Nicole, you mean chip or trip? Mm -hmm. I said, no. I said, at that time, the brain does chip off <laughs> and discipline steps in. And whatsoever they get, they take. And as I told them, I said, the one time I will go and sit on in jail, I will put you all back in the, in the ground and I will sit down back because I am not going to let you all bring God's name into disrepute. Mm -hmm. So wherever you go, represent God properly. Because I myself will take you out. I don't have to wait for the devil to do it. I will do it myself. I'll go and sit down in the jail and wait for whatever God wants to do with me. Nicola, wow. Nicola how do you feel about those steps? The Bible says thou shalt not kill. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I'm fine with them. I, I mean, hearing them my whole life, I am aligned with them. Because if she would ask me, she's just like, you know, well, they won't ask me, I think, because they don't want to know. Mm. I don't have anything going on. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> for me, I just it does not make sense to me to do, right, do have a relationship yeah. right now because I have nothing to offer the person. I, If I even wanted to, all of that money would be going to our university, which is wildly expensive. So mm. I don't have anything to offer. I'm not psychologically ready for that. So it's a no for now. So I'm great with the steps. It's fine. You know, I don't know about the house thing, but that's that's great. What well, I want to get to, I mean, after all this study, what what exactly was uh, your goal? mission in life? Yeah, I've had very many. I think every child starts off wanting to be a doctor. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I like mission, so I wanted to be a missionary doctor for a long time. And then our school's guidance counselor, Go Convent, she um she told us research the jobs that you want to do, and I did, and I listened to a TED talk of a. Uh, there is a, a, a missionary medical organization mm -hmm. called Doctors Without Borders. It's French, so that's not the name, the MSF, if anybody's interested. And I looked at her TED talk and I realized I could not do it because she was working in Haiti and a little girl and her grandmother watched their mom die and she had to look at the video they took of their mom being killed to yeah. help them with the consultation. I absolutely cannot do that. Yeah. So then I realized I couldn't be a doctor. But I do like languages and I still like missions. So I just know right now that the goal is to learn as many languages that are useful within the refugee sector and help children in some way, refugee children in that context. Amen, amen. That's you know, I too wanted to be a doctor when I was smaller. I never like, no, that. <laughs> yeah, but it just never worked out. <laughs> I ended up doing more surgeries. They all did. <laughs> Being part of surgeries than doing surgery. So, you know, um, I want to switch a bit yes, to Nicole. Hmm. Well, you're back, yeah. right? And, you know, after being, I mean, we had a, a beautiful testimony after being baptized in, in 93 mm -hmm. with Pastor um, St. Henry. Fitz Henry. Fitz Henry. 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 You know, we. I guess I don't know, but 
Yeah, you know, I, I know it's been a little while since you, you have been there and a lot of things have happened, especially pertaining to your daughter then. And even to, with her and with, family. And with, yeah, and with your family. I just want to put, uh, put in something here. If you never saw Nicole's testimony, you go back a year on why we believe. <laughs> yes. And you will see Nicole's in testimony. Early, in the early, yeah. um, in season in, one. In season yeah. one, when yes. the lighting wasn't as good and we mm -hmm. won't, you know. <laughs> yeah, bear with us. We are, we are learning. Yes. <laughs> growing. Yes. <laughs> and growing. <laughs> so, Nicole, tell us, how, what, what, what were the challenges that, that truly stepped in and how you... Um, your you and your family yeah um Overcome i want this. to say that the same week that you remember because i in my testimony i spoke about how many persons in my family yes, died, died mm -hmm. yeah and the thursday before the testimony aired my brother was killed mm -hmm. hmm. when we were on our way to Barcelona's funeral hmm. so and you know i i was like at that point i was like I declared it, but I, mean, I said, Satan, you're such a liar. Mm. I said, you're just conquered. And you're not going to stop me from telling of God's goodness and love. Mm -hmm. God, and I, I trusted God. And I said, God, you are in control. And I learned that my brother, because he has always had the testimony, the witness from myself and Buddha also. Mm -hmm. And I understand that he was on his journey with God. So mm -hmm. that's resurrection morning alone will tell. Mm -hmm. um, but it's hard and at that time we were um trying to get our own home mm -hmm. yes which has been a hard journey i can't remember i told you all how we were evicted and put out of our own home when we were we were That's living in, in in your we living with family yeah. and that day we were preparing for a wedding and they had to usher i printed programs um my husband was DJ and so like, we were busy and the lights were turned off on us. And, <laughs> but again, when, when you, one thing, as you know, once you're doing something for God, you don't let obstacles stop you. Yeah. So all we had to do is we'll deal with this later. Yeah. <laughs> and we just had to leave and rush to go and take care of the wedding, which was the wedding of another, Odinga Dickinson was right. his wedding, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. And Nadia. And so we went and we did, they did what we, so while they were at the wedding and my husband did what he had to do and stuff, we had to slip out, go to the police station, make a report and then go in and just grab whatever in the dark, um, <laughs> and things. So then somebody took a relative, took us in with that period. But while we were at the relative, some things started to get a little tenuous, mm. you know, personalities clashing and stuff like that. And, but we have nowhere to go, <laughs> but. It started to get so tenuous that um, I was. It was a Tuesday. My husband was at work because he works until ten. In, she works from ten in night till the next morning, and the Lord just said to me, "Nicole, leave." I was like, "God, I have nowhere to go." Mm. He said, "Nicole, leave," and I just said, "You guys, the kids, just pack up, pack up, let's go," hmm. you know, and we packed up and I went and we drove to where I work. Because that's the only place you got my husband. And then I sat down on the steps. And the children sat down on the steps of the office there. And I bowed my head and I said, I said, God, I have nowhere to go. <laughs> we had called Pastor Lowe. And he was trying to get something for us to stay at USC mm. overnight and stuff. But I said, God, you have nowhere to go. I said, well, God, I trust you. Hmm. I said, I trust you. And Lord, I will not let the devil break me. I, I have that confidence in you. And so we there, and I started to make phone calls. And then I called um, Sister Bola from our church. And I said, Sister Bola, we have nowhere to go. We were evicted, as you know. Uh, we have nowhere to sleep. And thank God it was during the holidays, so the children didn't have to go to school. Hmm. School was going to open in like two weeks. Okay. And she, Sister Bola, was taking care of a member of our church who had to move out of our home, Sister Smith. And while I was talking to Sister Bola, Sister Smith heard her saying um, she was about to tell us and Nicole and they have nowhere to go and stuff like that. And she said, send them by me. Hmm. And hmm. so this was Rondell Haynes who was here recently. He lived downstairs. So he, upstairs. And so they called Rondell and said, told him to prepare the upstairs. Wow. We are coming. And we went there. Hmm. Um, we lived there. Um, basically, for the first 
two years rent free, a year and a half or so rent free. And then of course, if somebody's home and they, they put in a little rent and stuff like that. But all this time we are looking for a home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, our family had some situations, I can't say all, right? Mm-hmm. Because God is still looking some things out. Right. Yeah. But every day we had, we, we from since we were in all of our journeyings, because we have lived in Digo Martin to Laventil to Sour, back to move on, leave move on, went back to Digo Martin from Digo Martin to Gonzalez. Hmm. Never own home. I have given away appliances on like three occasions because of that. Yeah. So um so in that situation there again people we just basically had clothes, stuff like that, but just give away things because I'm not I don't believe in hoarding. I believe in blessing others. Right. Because God my God shall supply all my needs mm. according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. We live by that. And I would say you have to let your children see. Right? Mm-hmm. Now one of the things that drove us and has been had drive us in getting a home because these children, all our lives, because you engage your children in whatever you're doing. So visitations, they're there, come and sing, come and pray, come and hug up granny, whosoever. Mm-hmm. So they were always involved mm-hmm. in whatever my husband and I are doing in ministry. And so they said we were worshiping and praying. We had an agreement that we had asking God for specific things. And as a family, we'll pray over that every day in worship. We just mm-hmm. pray over it then and ask God to take us three steps and to grant it, despite how discouraging things were. And they said, one day when we were worshiping, they said to us, um, mom and dad, you know, we see y'all pray and we see all other people, God answering their prayer, but we're not seeing what we want, which is our home. Mm-hmm. We're not seeing God saying yes. Mm-hmm. And we have come so close and then it's just pulled back and they felt as if you know god was wasn't didn't answer, read, yeah. didn't mm-hmm. give us that and we said to them if god is not giving it to us it's because we are not ready mm-hmm. we have to grow yeah 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 it's sorry it's not that <laughs> yeah. god god wants to do it but there are things in us there's dross in us there's some disciplines there's just something mm-hmm. so what we need to pray and ask god is to show us ourselves more search try show us the wicked ways in us yeah. so that we'll become eligible to mm-hmm. have our own home mm-hmm. yeah. but we persevered in prayer and faith and stuff like that and then in the journey my husband with his experience um his own trial <laughs> and but Again, we were praying and God was working out and everything like that. And then they said, my husband got some money that his salary that wasn't paid to him for mm-hmm. a few years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was a breakthrough. Hmm. Because when we got that, we just pay off, pay off bills, just pay off. Because right. if you want to get in a mortgage, you have no, no, mm-hmm. no we have yeah. no opportunity for mortgages yet. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't, I don't agree with fake it till you make it. I believe in operate until it happens, right? <laughs> so you operate. Mm-hmm. And so it paid off our bills. Not only paid, we got a lot of us to bless others. And we were just doing what we have to do and put aside for when that mortgage happened. But we weren't just waiting, right? So we started to seek to pursue it on our own. And we put money in the credit union and we say, okay, this money is here in the credit union. So why wouldn't the credit union want to give us a loan, Mm -hmm. right? And so we went, there were options in purchasing a home and we went to the credit union. (laughs) And when we went and we sat before this lady and stuff like that, and she said, "Uh, why y'all don't look for something cheaper? Why y'all don't buy a piece of land? And why isn't TTMF? Now, when we went to TTMF, the first person, the when we went to, <laughs> wait, it's government. They had the guy. When we went to TTMF, the first officer that dealt with us, she was, we were literally insulted. Hmm. And she said she'll call us back and she'd never call us back. And so, but again, you have to persevere and you have to continue in prayer. Mm-hmm. And so eventually I went and I filled, I went back online and I filled out and put in what you're saving is and stuff like that. And this young lady called me and she set up another appointment with mm-hmm. another officer. Mm-hmm. And when this officer, the interview, because they were doing online interviews yeah. because of the, you know, call you on the phone to interview you. And when I was at work that day and the lady called me and when I said, she, why am I speaking to you? You have another officer. Why am I doing this interview? I said, well, it's 
the organization that's mm-hmm. at the top. Mm-hmm. Actually, I shouldn't be speaking to you and we are not continuing this any further. And she hung up on me. Mm. Okay. I sat there. I said, again, God, no good thing will you withhold from them that walk uprightly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know this was going to happen, God, mm-hmm. and I'm going to relate to it at this level. Right? I said, and I, I said, Lord, I am not going to let the enemy break me. So that happened. And then we went to where I went to the credit union for the landlady. lady. She basically, she shut us down. I left there so dejected. Hmm. My husband and I went to the car and I tell my husband, I said, please just leave me alone for a while. Hmm. I sat in that car and I cried. I said, God, I said, God, whatever it is, help me. Because my children, God, I said, God, for Gideon and I, it's okay. I said, but our children need to see you come through with a home. Yes. for their faith mm-hmm. because when they were a certain age we asked them we said when you all reach 15 16 will you all leave church and they were offended mm. we said no because when you reach 15 16 you, you can make your own decisions mm-hmm. and we want you we want you all to be going to church because you all know jesus and not because yeah. of mommy and yeah. daddy yeah yeah, yeah 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 and they assured us that that, that won't happen <laughs> But we asked them that too, to get them thinking about it also. Mm-hmm. So I see, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And yeah, so my husband left me the car and I sat down and I spoke to God and stuff. And the, the crying went to talking to God, went to praising God. God, I thank you for this experience. Mm-hmm. I thank you for the pain. I thank you for the hurt I'm feeling. But God, you said you would give us a home and I'm trusting you. Yeah, yeah. And then I took my phone and I called my former boss that I used to work with politically because mm-hmm. he's like a dad to me. And I reached out, I said, I, I just have to call somebody who understands me and I know you understand me. I said, Miss Williams, I don't know what I have done. Mm-hmm. I said, and I'm searching myself, but I'm just asking God to just make that way for my children. And for, and you know, because on this side of thing too, you have a man who I have provided the money, but I still can't give my family a home. Mm-hmm. And psychologically, mm-hmm. as a man, you can relate yeah. because it's like, why can't I do this? Yeah. And so, and he said to me, um, Nicole, write a letter. Write a letter and explain your whole journey. Because when I was working with him in politics, um, the John John Towers became available. And he said, um, Nicole, you want one? I said, it doesn't have enough. I said, I won't deny the constituents mm. by taking a home. Mm. I said, when it have enough, I said, anytime it have enough, right? And 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 that was it. So I never mm-hmm. engaged mm-hmm. in that bit. But under politics, I could have had a mm-hmm. home, but I just have, because of who God is, you yeah. have to yeah. operate in a particular yeah. way yes. and you have to, others first, they're new. Mm. And then you see all these mothers coming in you know, because we had different programs that we will do. I see the and they help the ladies. We'll put them in the women's program to make sure they pay their, they, because they owe HDC, mm-hmm. even though the rent was $100 mm-hmm. a Monday and it's $12,000. And so you put them in program, but you have to pay your rent. And mm-hmm. we had programs like mm-hmm. that. So, but, and so I wrote the letter and I sent it to him via email. And he continued to pray. And mm. um, remember, we had the 24 hour prayer. Yeah. And so one of the Mondays on the 24 hour prayer room was finished because I'm about my father's business. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting, as I tell people, remember the 24 hour prayer room, computer, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. table. Only time you leave there is when you run to the bathroom, mm-hmm. maybe when somebody throws you in a prayer room and yeah. then you just run back and I sit right there. So that, that would be my position for 24 hours. Mm-hmm. I would not move unless that happens. Mm-hmm. I have to move. Mm-hmm. But that's where God had me. When we finished at eight o'clock in the night, my phone rang. HDC called me and said, Michelle, we believe you qualify for this housing and we want you to go and visit and view it. Mm. Eight so o'clock in the night. Mm-hmm. Work for instance, four. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. getting a call at eight o'clock in the mm. evening. I just started praising the Lord. I called my husband and I tell him. And that's what started our journey. However, when it came back to the name that she doesn't want to call me, the housing mm. place. A oh. whole different officer mm. who knew nothing about us. Mm. She stepped in, 
started to process all documents. And she said, Michelle, I'm not your officer. All right, but she became our officer. Go on. And she called our workplace to get things. The lady just worked, mm -hmm. worked to make sure mm -hmm. that this. And it's so much so, we got it at with 5% interest. They paid actually, we had to pay 5% mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not, not 10. Mm -hmm. We got 95% financing. Wow. She did all of that. Wow. You know, and that was the August of 2021. And by November 2021, we were in our own home. Mm -hmm. To go be going. Fully furnished. Hmm. Fully furnished. And uh, our children have their own bedrooms. <laughs> they have their own <laughs> home. They're not walking around anybody's space. Mm. And have to say, okay, well, this is um, Sister Smith's thing here, so you can't take yeah. any, none of it. None of that God supplied. And through all the tears, through all the insults, we went to another banking institution where we were banking all these years. Mm -hmm. And that's another place you literally insulted. Hmm. And the man was like, we all look for some piece of land in Grandy. Because hmm. <laughs> I don't see y'all getting anything. Hmm. And there was another lending. And my, I remember my husband <laughs> told this lady, well, another banking institution and everything. And, it's, and she called us and said, it's not that y'all don't qualify, but um, this housing development, our bank is not funding it. And my husband was like, but why? Why would this? And mm -hmm. she think, and she said, um, no, it's just not going to happen. And my husband and if said to her, he said, in a year's time, I will call you and tell you that my children and my wife and I are in our yes. own home at this venue and it will be funded. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It will be funded. And when he called her and he told her and he asked her, she asked him, um, can I ask who funded you? Mm. He said, that's none of your business. Yeah, I was just important. wanted you to know that what I told you, my God will do. He yeah. did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did it, mm -hmm. and we are in our own home. Mm -hmm. I had asked a parent because, and I would just put out there people, and people ask you to sign security and loans to them and go and do higher purchase with them, say no. <laughs> just say no. Because I did that for somebody. Right. And I had, at the, at the time then, about six, seven years ago or more, I had them repossess this stuff because the person wasn't okay. paying for it and i had them repossess everything and stuff like that and brethren there was a eleven thousand dollar bill that remained right that was never paid and that was hindering all mm. because our name my name not mm -hmm. all yeah, my yeah. name was yeah. by yeah. amy notes yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> the yeah. things that i never owned and so i had to go and Pay, pay that, that off but i also needed to get like a clean slate and there was this parent in the school that i i spoke to and i just said i told her the situation mm -hmm. and i said i which is as i said i speak to, i spoke to her like mother to mother and i said um i said i have the money to pay it off but i would just like what that has happened at unicoma give us that slate mm -hmm. so that this obstacle could be removed mm -hmm. and the parent said to me well, write out, send me a WhatsApp to me, everything that you just told me. And I would talk to such and yeah, such right. who mm -hmm. was in a position to do that, in a very mm -hmm. good position mm -hmm. to fix it. And stuff never, ever got back to me. Never. Never. But again, press on because there's a statement that I use and I, I, you have to speak it into your life. When, the, when, when we reach those doldrum, I say yet still i rise, rise. Mm -hmm. that's all mm -hmm. <laughs> anytime so it's just like that slow just like that and action you're not you're not i'm not going to allow the enemy to shift my mind from what god has promised and so she also i sent a text message and i i very nothing nothing insulting mm -hmm. i let her know that god did it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, they were sent back with all kind of excuses and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And uh, on top of that, they had to watch, you understand, mm -hmm. 
that God <laughs> had your whole family excel in. You know, mm. she, mm. I, I, I'm kind of straightforward and I'm not calling any names. But the point is, you see persons see and they label you. You understand? Yeah, because yeah. you're doing certain things and they think, I don't have to. Um, I don't play rich, but I always say, God said he will supply. Mm -hmm. When our children entered school and secondary school level and higher learning level, I told my husband, we're making their phones postpaid. Mm -hmm. When they have to serve the internet for something, they must not have to depend on the school Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. You understand? So my son, they had to hotspot other people <laughs> in the school mm -hmm. to help them do their work. Mm -hmm. Because that's how we are. I said, the, the, the spirit of probably tell you higher than the highest human to encourage us God ideal for his journey. You have to operate like that. You have mm -hmm. to be like that. Right? So my soul coming back to Nicola because this is more about mm -hmm. two. Yeah. When she said she wanted to apply for the school that she wants to go to that she'll tell you all about. And she came to us and she, she came to me and she said, Mommy, I want to go mm -hmm. to the school. Mm -hmm. And but money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said that's not your concern. Mm -hmm. We're the parents. We made you. Yeah. That's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to cut off your dream because you think your parents don't have any money. Mm -hmm. I said, because in all your years in school and with all the trials have you been through, have you all ever lacked? Mm -hmm. have, all, have you all ever not been able to get your school books? Have you ever not been able to say, God hmm. always came through from Cole Porter, yeah. me alone working, you got to make sure somebody buy the books. You understand mm -hmm. that you get the money. You just have to know how to channel the blessing when God sent it. Mm -hmm. yes. So he said, I said, apply. I said, if I have to walk and sell my products, if I have to go in the mall and stand up with concert tickets and say, please, my daughter has to go to school, by," I said, you know, I will do it. Mm -hmm. I said, when it comes to y'all, you know, you have no shame. I said, I have no shame begging for others. I'll have shame begging for myself. But I'll have no shame begging for others or y'all. I said, you know, I have no, my shame book open when it, when it comes to helping others. And we are your parents. Yes. Yeah. And she applied, you know, and... My husband and I were just programming online, whatever action plan in place once she gets accepted. So, yeah. over to you. What happened? Do you want to comment on that? Yeah. I just want to so, ask Nicole one thing, though. What, what kept your faith so grounded? What, what always keeps you so strong? Because if anybody knows Nicole, you know, as she had she said, she's a powerful prayer warrior. And if you are feeling down and, and you just speak to Nicole, just the way in which she speaks, she always speaks with power and authority. Mm. She always, you know, lifts you up. I mean, Nicole came here one morning and, and by the time Nicole was finished, and I would feel like we were energized <laughs> and ready to go, you know? And, and what, what keeps you that way? And the point is, you know, there's a song that um, says he's able. God is able to do what he says he will do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's yeah. able. Mm -hmm. yeah. God doesn't lie. Yeah. God doesn't set us up. We have a choice to make. And we have two choices. Just as how the Lord says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yeah. Right? There's no member of God. You can't serve God and mammon. That's really the text I want yeah. to think. You can't serve God and either hate the one or serve the other. Cling to the one or love the other. I choose to cling to God. Mm -hmm. I choose to when, as, as I say, I will start off talking to God and I start off complaining. Complaining will go to praise. Praise will go to assurance. And when I finish, God and I just nice. God, i going at it again. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I don't speak to Satan. and say, God, tell that devil he's a liar. <laughs> I say, God, tell him mm -hmm. that I am your child and he have no power in my life. Mm -hmm. He can't do anything mm -hmm. that you ain't allowed. Yeah. Because you are my God. I have Job example. Mm. Right? So sometimes it, when they were smaller, they didn't understand. So I'll be driving. I'll be in the car, music playing, I'm singing. And then I'll say, that's a lie from the pit of hell. <laughs> Get the hands. And they watch me like a man. <laughs> I said, the devil just saw a seed and I have to declare it openly. Mm. Because he can't read my thoughts. Only mm -hmm. God can do that. So I'm letting him know openly. And I said, Jesus, tell him he's a liar. I say, and show him, you know, God, show him. Mm -hmm. You understand? And you know, sometimes he sends people to discourage you. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. He sends people to prophesy doom and gloom in mm -hmm. your mind. And I'll watch, I say, I'm not receiving that. Mm 
-hmm. You know the power to speak that in my life, and you know, because the last I checked, you did not die on Calvary. Mm -hmm. The last I checked, you did not write a Bible. Mm -hmm. Not my life. <laughs> As only God can speak to my life. So I can't yeah. receive it. Yeah. Because a lot of the time we allow people to activate things in our lives with their word, by their word. You understand? I remember times somebody told me my husband fainted in church and I sat and they started to speak never take. I said, Satan, get the hands. He doesn't watch me. <laughs> I said, I have to speak to the demon in you that telling me that. <laughs> get the hands. <laughs> I said, not my husband. He can't have him. He's a liar. Mm -hmm. I said, so you need to hush. <laughs> right? If you want me to drop you out, I can drop us. Give me a drop. I said, I can put you out my car now, but you can't come and speak to my uncle, my husband. I said, I'm not going to allow you to operate as an mm. emissary of the devil in my life. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, I, I, the point is, I allow my mind to be fixed on God's promises, yes. yeah, 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 His yeah. word, and uh, even though the discouragement might come, when you sp speak to God about yes. it, mm -hmm. And you will just hear him impressing on your mind and you just have to praise him. Mm -hmm. You just have to come to understand, I didn't bring it this far to leave you. And you just start to praise. Yes. Yes. You understand? And many times when I drop them off, because yeah. they know what happening, mm -hmm. you understand? But we will let them know what happened. Mm -hmm. You understand? We always tell them what happened and how God came through because mm -hmm. you have to develop their faith. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. But I will lock my car doors. Well, my glasses are really always up, but I will start to play my songs mm -hmm. and I drive him from Port of Spain to work praising God mm -hmm. because praise does confuse the enemy. Mm -hmm. He must ask why she's still praising God and mm -hmm. all of this in happening. The mm -hmm. Yeah, in the midst of the storm, I always seek by God's grace to praise him through. Mm -hmm. You understand? I ain't saying cry, you know. I ain't saying I ain't feel like, but as not me that made me worthy. Christ made me worthy. Mm. And that's, God asks us to always remember that. Remember who you are in me. Yes. And remember the promise I made to you. Yes. You understand? And when he was on that cross, he saw Nicole, mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. and I live with that assurance that, as the song says, he knows my name. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody else too, but he knows my name. Yeah. So I have a direct access mm -hmm. right and we tend to forget that when yes. the trials come yeah. but when the pain comes it's the same god that i can talk to yes. Exactly. Yes. you understand yeah. and that's why again you know donny mccluck and there's a song that you say i'm walking in authority mm. you understand so even when i was working in politics and people come in the nonsense i say yeah this it's not me you know you have to respect the god in me you understand mm -hmm. you have to respect the god in me you know, and sometimes your faith had to make you act a little crazy. You understand? Because <laughs> at one point there were three women in the office, right? I'm not stupid. I'm from Nabin, so right. <laughs> so I had one long with two on the material. This long. It takes so. <laughs> and but it's, it's three women in the office. It's under my table. So this man came in, he wants help. You understand? But we can't just give you help, so I have to assess you and stuff yeah. like that. And I'm yeah. managing the office. And he come. And he started, he went to the first secretary, she told her, you'll have to talk to Michelle or the other thing he said. And I came out and I talked to him and said, so we have the assessment, there's a process, you need to come and see the MP and stuff like that. And this man started upon one show mm -hmm. and raised his voice and started thing. So I just watched him and I walk in the office and I pull out my hood <laughs> and I come out. I said, I'll beat you. <laughs> I said, I will beat you. And then we'll go, the ambulance will come and then I'll go to the police station. I say, but don't think you could come in here because three women in here mm -hmm. and beat them. Mm -hmm. You understand? I say crazy. <laughs> right? And that man straightened up and he walked right out. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because that I just give that aura. I am not afraid. Mm -hmm. You understand? When the other bad boy threaten us and stuff like that, and if people come, um, mm -hmm. if you had to shoot me, I had to shoot my back. Because if you shoot me, that means God allow it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not afraid of you. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the authority. Mm -hmm. You understand? Not presumption, you know. But if you're in a situation, you cannot allow the enemy to make you cower. Yeah, you cannot right. allow the enemy to make you distrust God. Will, right. Where he promised you. Yeah. You understand? The devil is a liar and the truth is not in him. Mm -hmm. And that is the premise that I live and operate from. You mm -hmm. understand? Sometimes misunderstood for it, sometimes he did for it, but then I say, as I told the Lord on my bed the other night, I say, God, I know you love me. Mm -hmm. If anybody else on this earth don't love me, I know you in heaven love me. Yeah. 
I said, so even when I might feel alone, God, I know you love me. Yeah, yeah. And I operate with that. So when I get up, square my shoulders again, and that's why I walk with the authority. I walk. Some days are bad, John. Walk, no, that is Jesus' walk. I'm sorry, <laughs> devil, not get it through. <laughs> well said, well said. Nicolette only laughs. So, Nicolette, mm-hmm. tell us, even in this, um, this part, well, you applied for university. Tell us that experience. What was the outcome? So, <clears throat> um, our we have this person at convent one of the teachers is assigned to helping us with our university applications so my mom did say that we had to do form six so you're doing form six and after lower six which was getting through that was a whole miracle from god on its own and our teacher advised us if we want to start university and not take a gap year to start applying from the vacation during the july august vacation because, and I would advise other students as well, because some universities, especially ones in the US, or if you're using UCAS, you have to write like a personal statement. Yeah. And when school starts, you don't want to be worrying about mm-hmm. a personal essay when you have homework and what not to do. So I remember starting to do my UCAS application and I was, I was, um, I was, it was a very interesting experience because parents often say, oh my gosh, my child is growing up. For me, it was, I cannot believe I'm doing a university application. <laughs> and so I started doing the application and I asked my teacher for help. And the school that I applied to two schools, um, I'll say the school later. I applied to two schools um, and one of them required that I get all ones in the KP Unit 2 examination. Mm-hmm. And the other school said, we would like it if you get all ones, but if you get it two, it's fine. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, we'll apply to those two. So I have a backup choice. My teacher suggested three others to me, for which I also needed to get all oh, ones. Yeah. Um, they're all very amazing schools. Um, but she saw something, God put something on her heart, I believe, mm-hmm. and I applied to all of the schools. So. Doing the CAPE process, apart from the stress that is CAPE mm. itself, there was also, I need to get all ones because if I don't get all ones, I'm not going to be able to yeah. go to the school that I want to go to. And then the cost of the school um, <laughs> hit me. Um, so I was actually thanking God that I decided not to do medicine because I remember they sent us like a list of the cost and medicine was like 63,000 pounds. Don't convert that. Um, and (laughs) I was looking at the cost and I was like, oh my gosh, how are we going to fund university? Especially since my brother is four years older than me. So he's currently in university. He's Mm -hmm. in his last year. Yes, he's in his last year. So our parents have been paying for his university. And I would like to study abroad. So that's doubly expensive because as an international student, you don't, you're not eligible for (coughs) um, bursaries and scholarships for most schools because you're um you're not a national mm-hmm. so it's kind of like the price as it is you have to pay it and going through that it was very scary because i'm just like my parents said you apply you don't need to worry about the cost you just focus on getting your grades and i was concerned because i was just like even if i get the grades how am i gonna go because yeah. it's very expensive and so during the term after i applied the school that i wanted to go to my dream university, the school that I would like to go to, that I am going to at that space, sent me an email and they're like, hi, we're considering you for the Lord Northfield Scholarship, which is a scholarship that pays your tuition, Hmm. your accommodation, your meal plan, and we give you a stipend, a generous stipend so that you can exist, plus two return airplane tickets so that I can come back twice a year, Mm -hmm. two per year. And I was like, for me? Look so I don't have to done. pay anything. Mm. And so it was the most amazing thing to happen. It was absolutely a miracle because I messaged my teacher and I said, Miss, I applied to this school on a leap of faith. Mm-hmm. I did not know it was going to come of it. Part of me had already written it off as that's just not going to happen. Mm. And God made a break. Yeah, got a yeah. scholarship and mm-hmm. it was happening. But we still needed mm. to get all ones in Cape because I could only get the scholarship if I got all ones in Cape. Yeah, right. And so doing KP Unit 2 is a very vigorous experience, especially since 
um, in convents, when you're in the upper classes, form six, that's when you start to take on leadership positions. And I had quite a few leadership positions that have their taxing moments. So you have to balance your leadership positions and, and your church mm. work, yeah, with academia and your homework. And then, so it was quite scary going through it. And then the CXC body was so generous that they changed our syllabus. Hmm. And then they changed our IA and did not give it. Never mind. Um, <laughs> and it was a very, it was a very fun time. Mm -hmm. And God allowed me. I can say the experience. So we did cave. We got through it. All of us were in awe at some of the exams. <laughs> some of them were. Care math is a mm -hmm. great subject. And um, we did the exams, and we had to wait until August, the last day in August, to get them back, which was kind of concerning for me because I want to study abroad. So you have to apply for your visa in time. Yeah. And for them, their results come back on the 17th. Ours was coming back in the last week of August. How am I going to apply for my visa? visa? Mm -hmm. Especially if I don't have um, the confirmation that the university has accepted me. Yeah. So I had to wait and pray and say, Lord, please help us do that. Please help me <laughs> to get home once. Help them to look at my paper and have mercy on me and give me marks because we need them. And during that time, I tend to not process things, especially things that are anxiety inducing until right before it happens. And during that time, Auntie Nicole was very adamant that we have a concert. So because going up in church, there's always on my heart to give things back yeah. during CXC. After I did CSEC, I some the same sister from my church that helped us get the home well when mm. we had nowhere to go. Yeah. She um, gifted me some financial help mm. to because you know for doing well as a blessing. And she always said, she said, every time God does something in your life, give back to others. Yeah. And yeah. because of that, that's how we live. And so I remember I gave all of the money that she gave to me, I gave it to somebody in church wow. who needed help. In Cape Unit 1, when we got our results, I don't remember if we did do anything, but it was on our hearts to give back. And so this time for Cape Unit 2, and we hadn't even gotten results back, the big thing was the concert where yeah. we would donate yeah. all the funds yeah. to our church to buy books and educational material for children in need in our community. So that was a big thing. And I hadn't even gotten back whether or not it was yeah, university yeah, yeah. was a go. Yeah. So results are coming out. I wasn't thinking about it. I had the concert to distract me from it. And the day of my friend and myself, we were co-leaders of SJC Guitar Club. If you're in SJC, join the Guitar Club. And <laughs> we were co-leaders and she messaged me and I was messaging her. When we're talking about results and I still had no feeling toward it. I was mm -hmm. not nervous. I was not excited. I yeah. was kind of numb toward it. And she messaged me and I hadn't processed to set the scene. I need ones mm -hmm. because not only will it affect whether or not I am accepted into the yeah. school, but the scholarship. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. without the scholarship, I don't know. I'm oh, sure yeah. God would have made a way, mm -hmm. but I don't know how we, I would have been able to go. And so we were messaging each other. Results came, were supposed to come out at six o'clock. Yes, or 6.30, one of those times. And we were messaging each other and she got her results like 30 minutes before it came out. And as soon as she told me that she got her results, I started hyperventilating. I felt like I was gonna die because I was gonna see the results and I wasn't ready to see it. And I tried to get in and the site wouldn't let me. Welcome to CXC. And I remember saying, okay, God, you probably don't want me to see it right now i just need ones i can get like a b in a profile i don't mind just please help me to get whole ones and i tried again and it would not work so i had to wait until six o'clock so i was at home with my father my brother and my mom auntie nico was at work <laughs> i don't know why you were me auntie nico because of bbs oh. oh sorry my mom was at work and i finally the time came and i got to open my results and they gave like they just ripped the band-aid off because you don't have to scroll it just appears in front of your face and i got all once thank god Amen. <laughs> and then it was literally a miracle if you did 
cake unit to this year you will understand what i'm saying it was a hundred percent a miracle that i got all ones and as soon as i got it i emailed the university and i was able to get the scholarship and i got accepted and i could start my visa process so that's wow. the, the visa process is a trial uh, yeah but i mean god has worked that out magnificently as mm -hmm. well because okay so for your visa especially if you're applying abroad you have to pay something called at least for a uk visa you have to pay something called an ihs and pounds to tt you know is a lot yeah. and they when you're paying something with your credit card more than likely they'll ask you to pay it in usd american dollars and the country has a countrywide credit card limit of three thousand usd mm -hmm. and if you spend that in a month you cannot use Man, your credit card for really anything really else yeah. which we did not know at no. the time so i was trying to pay this ihs due to the many doors that got opened with um mom's the people in mom's life mm -hmm. thanking god for them um and we could not pay it and i need to pay it because my visa is going to take a certain time mm -hmm. i need to leave a certain time and it was not going through. We went to the bank, we spent three hours there, and it ended up being a closed door. Couldn't do anything, but a solution was made, and we were able to pay for the IHS, but that was a really big trial, and that's also a point where I realized, again, again in my life, the power of prayer, Amen. because yeah. I tend to be quite private and inward about things, especially some, some things, English, some things that I am struggling with, and mom, because of her experience with prayer ministry, she'd send that to her intercessor yeah. mm -hmm. friends and they were praying. And she's like, you don't know how many people are praying for you right now. Yeah. And I really got to see God answer prayer because we we're able to pay it. And not only were we able to pay it, but we were able to fast track the process of things that we saw. But throughout the entire university application process, Kate process, getting the scholarship, that scholarship wasn't even advertised on the site. Like, as far as even the teacher helped me knew, we did not know oh it existed. God, yeah. I've never been happier to be from the Caribbean. And it was just amazing. God working things out. Mm -hmm. Tell them the school. Oh, University of Cambridge. That's Ooh, the what? university that I got accepted to. Thank God. Again, a miracle. But yeah. Amen. And all of that, when in all your education process, the children, we tell them, God asks you, say yes. Yeah, sure. Do not, you cannot put church work aside for education because Jesus Christ didn't put anything mm -hmm. aside and say, I can't take care of you right now because I'm dealing with this. He deals with everybody. Yeah. Make it work. Yeah. That's all we tell them. Make it work. Don't say no to God. Right? And, and, and herself, her brother, they incorporated into their lives. We then we tell them it there if I have to drive, I drive, if I have to sleep in the car, we'll sleep in the car, but do what God has asked you to do. Because that's what you see your parents doing. Yeah. I wanna say one thing yeah. more. It it is indeed a miracle because I remember twenty four hour prayer. Yeah. Month after month, yeah. Nicolette yeah. will be there. Right, true. And she will be working. So yeah. to get ones on top of that. Miracles. Right? Miracle. God, yes. God yes. still works miracles. No sleep. Yep. He still works miracles. Amen. Hmm. I want to thank Nicole and Nicolette for just sharing that with us. And thank you for the opportunity. I'm sorry, but I remember telling God at one point, I didn't tell you this, but I remember telling God, I was just like, uh, one of the reasons why I was so, I think the main reason why I'm so happy that I got to go to St. Joseph's Convent and now the University of Cambridge is because the school that I went to in Gonzales Gloucester's American School Going to convent up or or even putting that down as a choice, well, at least in my experience, was not something that was just like, oh yeah, you, you know, you can apply for convent. And I remember thinking, I want to show the other children around me mm -hmm. that you can have dreams and that you can pursue them, yeah. even if it's something as small as a secondary school, the best secondary school in the country <laughs> that you want to go to. I remember applying for it, and when I came back to pick up my cousins from school at one point, one of the little girls was just like, oh my gosh, hi. And I was like, what school do you want to go to? And she's like, I want to go to your school. And I remember mm. feeling so happy that it was like, they can see that it's an option yeah. for them, mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter what school you're going to, you can have options. And even going to convents where you, the world is literally at your feet, 
in any school. I remember I didn't tell a lot of people that I did, but applying for University of Cambridge, and they're like, you applied for Cambridge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a huge deal. And I remember yeah. thinking I wanted to definitely have my life be a testimony, not of God's goodness as well, but also no dream is too big as long as you put it in God's hands. Mm -hmm. And so I told them, I was just like, Lord, if you do give me the opportunity to testify about it, I'm definitely going to take it because I would like other people to know as well that any dream you have, anything you want to pursue, as long as it's in line with God's plan, which he will show you along the way, don't be afraid to pursue it, regardless of whether you went to school in Gonzales or if you went to school in Mocha. It does not matter. Just do what your dreams are. And I could not do that at all if I didn't have the supportive church members in my life and the parents who just had the make it happen mentality, mm -hmm. even when there was nothing to make it happen. Yet. And the intercessors. Amen. Yeah. What are we doing? Yes. What are we doing? Beautiful words of encouragement. Yeah, yeah. You know, as I as I sit there, so many scriptures keep running through my mind. I know I wouldn't be able to remember <laughs> all, but one that that particularly I want to start with Matthew six thirty three: the mm. seek ye first the kingdom of God and His mm. righteousness, and all these all things, things shall things. be added unto you. Yes. You know it. I mean, we know Nicole, and you heard her struggles. But putting God first in the midst of everything, trusting yeah. in Him with all her heart, knowing that He is one who is not slack concerning any of His promises, mm -hmm. like how some men would count slackness. Yeah. And there He came through for her yeah. from her home, from, from her home to finances, mm -hmm. even to her, to her, her daughter. Ah. Uh, going to one of the the top schools mm -hmm. <laughs> is it the world? Um, well, it is ranked number one one okay. <laughs> okay, number one but it shows the the true power of faith yeah, the really scripture says to hold fast your faith without That's wavering really because man. he is faithful yes yeah. the one who has promised that yeah. god has promised that he will provide and yeah. that he will provide not just for her but for you amen my amen. brothers and sisters this is why nicole and nicolette believes amen. put god first despite the the, the the struggles that the enemy would or, or the obstacles sorry that the enemy would throw at us in these times, once you put God first, mm -hmm. I guarantee you will not come in last. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is why they believe. The word of God says in Revelation 12, 11, mm -hmm. and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by, by the, the word, word of, of their testimony. testimony. This time, as we close, we want to ask Nicole to pray for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pray for us, Nicole. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, we just continue to worship you. We thank you for who you are. Yes. We thank you that you are the Paracletos God, the God who is our helper. Mm. As we continue in your forgiveness, Father, we thank you that you have given us the testimony mm -hmm. to declare to the world yeah. via social media that you are God. You are the same yesterday, today, Amen. and forever. Amen. Amen. And all we need to do, Father, is to put our trust in you, Amen. to trust in your word, to hide your word in our hearts mm -hmm. that we yes. might not sin against thee. To love our neighbor as ourselves, because God, you said, if we have not love, we are sounding brasses and tinkling cymbals. <laughs> so God, help us to love, help us to testify, help us to read and grow in your word, Father. This ministry, oh God, the poor, Father, continue to bless them, bless the equipment, bless their father, videographer, their father, everyone. Just bless and expand it, dear God, your word, these testimonies. So God, your kingdom will advance. Answer because this is the purpose, Father. Thank you, yes, Lord. thank you, Father. We ask that you continue to fight for us. Yes, yes. We are agreeing and declaring that you will send your angels to fight 
for your children mm -hmm. and their God wherever is necessary. If Michael himself need to come mm -hmm. and stand for why we believe, mm -hmm. stand for Nicole, stand for Nicolette, stand for the video team, stand for your people, mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. stand for those who are listening and have been wavering yeah. because yeah. the enemy has been speaking discouragement. Silence him, their God, this evening and let them know, their Father, that you said, yes. I am your helper. Yeah. Do not fear what man shall do unto you. Do not fear what the yeah. enemy will bring because he is conquered. Jesus Christ said, it is yeah. finished. Yeah. And in all our situations, it will be declared. And well done, thou good and faithful servant. We know we will hear mm -hmm. once we remain faithful. Mm -hmm. God, yeah. Holy Spirit, continue to pray for your people. You. Continue, dear God, to help us to worship you in spirit and in truth father mm -hmm. continue to send your choices blessings where they are needed yes, and again we thank you for the testimony of your love in our lives yeah. in jesus name amen, amen. love you god amen, amen.